Yo, what's up snipers and welcome back to our Minnesota Wild GM mode. So we managed to make the playoffs, but unfortunately we're up against a tough, tough team in the Chicago Blackhawks who are 57, 22 and 3 during the regular season. Uh, they have actually a lot of snipers in their team. Two of them are over like 90 plus pretty much. And then they also got some very good defensemen too. So it looks like maybe it's just their power play and their offense that gets it done. We are a really good defensive team, so if we continue that, maybe we have a chance at winning a Stanley Cup or getting or well not winning a Stanley Cup. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Second round appearance. See as a Cramps is a ninety, Vince Lewis a ninety one. Those guys are really good. Forsberg's still playing good at thirty three years of age. And defensively they have Chikrin and Del Rio and Jake Bean, who's also really good. Same with Bulliu. Like, this team's a lot better than ours. And then, goaltending-wise, it's pretty solid, but we still got them beat in goal. So, if Corson could out-duel Comrie, we have a chance to get to round two. So, let's waste no time and get into game number one. Of course, they have home ice with a record like that. But hopefully, we could get past them somehow. Let the GEHEs get us past this round. That would be nice. So... Game 1 at the United Center in Chicago, the first time we've ever had to face them. First period, and it's scoreless, so we actually managed to shut them out. Shots are 15 to 14, though, so a lot of teams getting chances, or both teams getting a lot of chances, but nobody's been able to find the back of the net. Second period, and it is 2-1 us. Nicely done, boys. Fitzgerald gets the first goal of the playoffs for us, and Kaprizov, and then Abney's going to pull them within one. We're out shooting them though, 28 to 21 going into the third. Let's just keep it up, and hopefully we could take this game in Chicago. That would be huge. The way to start off the series too. They're getting a lot of chances to start this period, but Davison, who we signed in a free agency, makes it a 3-1 game. Is that all she wrote, or is Chicago gonna somehow come back late in this game? Last three minutes. Oh, there you go. Tommy Kilger makes it 4-1, and we take game one. Somehow easily against a really good offensive team, we shut them out and we score goals. So we might actually have a chance for sure in this. So Corson actually got an assist on that third goal. Really nicely done. Corson, he's helping the offense too. Three stars, Corson with 32 saves and one assist, I should say as well. Kaprizov gets second star, Fitzgerald gets the third star. Okay, so game number two, let's waste no time with this one as well. Still in Chicago, if we could take both these games going back home, I like our chances a lot. I don't know how good of a home team we were during the regular season, but let's see if we could get another road win here. First period, and it's one nothing Chicago, so Abney gets his second of the series, and we're getting heavily outshot 14-4, not liking that. If we get more chances in the second and tie the game, then we're back in the second period, and okay, this game's probably over. Abbott makes it 3 nothing with two quick ones, well, two ones to end the period. And we're being outshot still by 10 shots. This game's probably over and done with. Hopefully we could rebound from this. We don't want their offense to start clicking. And they're up 4 nothing now as Jacob Chikorin, who we could have signed a couple years ago, makes it a 4 nothing game. I'm just going to send the last of it. Okay, we managed to get one. Davison gets his second in the playoffs. But we lose by a score of 4-1. to one. Davison from Granlund. So, Mikhail Granlund still picking up points at his old age. There's the three stars. So, we win 4-1. Then they win 4-1. So, I don't know still how this series is going to go. If we lose this game again and we don't get a lot of offense, I may change the lines up a bit. So... Game three, come on guys, we got home ice now. If we can win both these games, we are in business. First period, and it's a scoreless first period. Shots are 9-5 in favor of us. Second period, and it's still scoreless. Shots 22-12 to in favor of us, so we are still out shooting them, but their goaltender is keeping them in it. Comrie's done it to us before. Hopefully we could get the first goal still. Penalty kill, large penalty kill. Killed off. It was a 5-on-3 power play for them. And, oh, Vince Lewis, the first-line sniper, makes it 1-0. And Ebbett with another. 
and they get two late goals, and we are going to fall in. Okay, wait a second. Oh my God, that, that was a tying goal. We're gonna fall in game three by a score of three to one. So our offense did not click really that much until the dying seconds. Tanner Pearson getting us a goal. So I think I'm gonna change up the lines a bit just to hopefully get us back in this because I don't want to go out in the first round this year. Okay, so let's go to edit lines. And let's see, what could we do here? Let's move Fitzgerald to the first line, Coonan down to the second line. Granlund, you know we're going to move you to the wing. Jeffron's actually been good though. Hmm. I don't know if, eh, maybe I'll just put Jeffron down here. So, Who's got the best face-off stats out of all these guys? I think it's Davis and Stilia. Davis and you're going to go back to your central role. Pearson. Actually. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to put Pearson on the right side, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Or actually, I want to move Kilger up. He scored a goal. Jeffron should actually still play up here. Davison's been good. I know it was, yeah, Davison's the one that's been good here. Jeffrey hasn't. So we'll move Jeffrey on down to the fourth line. And since Granlund and Pearson and stuff have been solid, Kilger, I think, has had a goal. We're going to move all those guys up a bit. Fitzgerald's going to get more time on that first line. He's got one goal, I think, in a series. So hopefully that's all we need. And we start winning games because we need to tie the series up going back to Chicago or else they have a chance to win it on their home ice too. So let's sim up to game four. Okay, so game number four. This is a huge game, guys. We got to win it. We're on home ice in the XL Energy Center, and they already score 14 seconds in. And we're down 2-1 after one. Gene Seabrook picks up his first ever NHL playoff goal. Philip Forsberg takes the lead, though, for Chicago, and we're getting out shot 12-4, but we're still in it. Second period. Oh, we're down 3-1. Are we going to be seriously close to a first round exit again? Oh, there you go. Davison pulls us within one. Come on, we need one more to tie it, boys. We want to win this game. This is a huge game for us. We're getting outshot by only six shots. We're still in this. Corson, you can hold the fort. Last three minutes. Come on, just get one goal, one goal. And we're not going to get it done. And we are on the brink of elimination for back-to-back -back years. We might go out in five games if we're not lucky. Uh, this is not looking good. I'm going to go best lines, I think. Chicago is just overpowering us. It's probably just because of the amount of offense they have. Like, we might be still in that rebuilding stage, which sucks, because I thought we were getting closer to being that cup-ready team. Davison's has played really well, so let's just go best lines here and see what the computer does for us. Hopefully, we could get a W here. So that's best lines. Okay, that looks actually pretty nice. Davison has three goals, though. I want to have him there. Yeah, I'll put Davison there. So every line is pretty solidly balanced, except for our fourth line. Okay, there you go. So there's best lines. Now let's see if we could come back from a 3 1 series deficit against one of the top teams in the league. If we could do it somehow, I don't know. I don't know what I would do, but I don't think we're going to be able to, but let's see if we can. We're in Chicago for this game as well, so we're going to slow sim the entire game. Or, we're going to slow sim the third period, I think. And it's 2-1 Nim, or is it 1-1? 1-1, okay. Knubel and Goligoski. Second period. Okay, I'll take it. 3 2 us. Now, Davison with two more goals. Wow. This guy's actually playing really well for an 80 overall in the playoffs. Let's just keep it up, boys. Get an insurance marker here. There you go. Bear Schultz finally comes through. The 89 picks up his first playoff goal of the season. And we might be taking it back to uh, Minnesota for a chance to tie the series up, which would be nice. That's five minutes, and we are going to force a game six. So we have a chance to tie the series at least, and we aren't going to go out in five games like last year. So yeah, Davison is turning out to be a pretty clutch player that we picked up five points or five goals in six games or five games actually for that matter. He has a goal per game, 
in the playoffs. Maybe he's just a really good playoff player, not necessarily a good season simulator. I don't remember how much points he had. But now we have a chance to tie the series with a home ice win. If we could do this, we might have a chance to throw the uh, Chicago Blackhawks off their game in Game 7. So back at the XL Energy Center for Game 6. So let's tie the series tonight, guys, and force that Game 7. We're going to slow sim the entire game because this is getting critical. Power play early for us, and we don't score. And they're going to score on their first shot of the game, Goligoski again. Come on, guys. You can't just let a goal in the first shot of the game. They still only have one shot throughout the first 10 minutes. Power play. Come on. Tie it up. Tie it up. And we don't tie it up. We're still out shooting them badly. And they're going to go up 2 nothing on four shots only in the first period. That's some EHEs for sure. Goligoski with both the goals. Come on, guys. We got to come back from this. Like, we need at least a goal in this period if we want to pull back in this. I know we're out shooting them, but we need to start converting on our chances. Last 10 minutes of the second period, still unable to solve their goaltender. They're catching up in shots now. Come on, guys, get one. Get one goal this period. And we are not going to get one that period, and we need two goals in the third period to come back and force a game seven. Come on, guys. I thought we were close to winning a cup, but I guess maybe we weren't just because of how much players we had to let go last season. At least we have some key pieces to help us rebuild, but we look like we're going to be going out in round one again. Yes, we are going to be going out in round one again this year. Or maybe not. Luke Coonan pulls us within two. Come on, can we get two more? And no, we are not going to get it done. So we are out in six games in round one. And we are set back by a rebuild. Like I said, I wanted to finish really close to the bottom of the league. Or I wanted to win the Stanley Cup. But now we have like a tweener pick, which is not good. So we kind of want to go back into a rebuilding stage. Granlin might retire this year too. So let's just sim all the way up to the draft and see who retired, who won the cup and all that stuff. I almost don't care about the playoff stats and all that stuff. So I'll see you guys when there's a pop-up. Okay, guys. So the Edmonton Oilers have won the Stanley Cup. And the Providence Bruins win the AHL. So now that that's done, let's just take a look at the awards. It's been a bummer of a year. And we've still only had one Stanley Cup Finals appearance in 10 years. So we need to start winning games and getting those prospects grown it's been a pretty bad GM mode series so far, at least in my opinion. Nobody's, like, we haven't gone that far. So let's just see who the cup final was between. Edmonton and Pittsburgh. Interesting. Chicago ended up getting to the conference finals and eliminated in seven games. So we were eliminated by one of the best teams in the entire league. So Stanley Cup, Edmonton, President's Trophy, Edmonton, Clarence S. Campbell, Edmonton, and Prince of Wales, the Pittsburgh Penguins, Stamkos, Stamkos. Jake Beans wins to Norris. Lady Bing goes to Volano. Calder goes to Peltier. I think that was the franchise guy from last year's draft. Clefbaum gets to Con Smythe. And Douglas gets the Vesna. That was the guy that could have had it, but Corson took it last year. Jennings goes to Douglas. Oberg, or, yeah, Oberg gets the Masterton. McDavid gets to Sulky. Stamkos to Lindsay. And Tarasenko the Richard. AHL Venkate, I don't even know. Anybody from our AHL team? Nope. Just a bunch of random prospects. So that's that. Now let's see who retired this year. And hopefully we have a decent pick this year. I don't know when we're going to be drafting because we made the playoffs. But I'd assume we're having like 20 something or 15th. Who are we going to get this year? I don't even know. And hopefully Granlin didn't retire, kind of, but he's probably going to be AHL if he does not retire. I think he's probably going to retire this year. I can almost feel like he's going to. And no, he's not, but what the hell is this? The annual the top six defenseman I get in the seventh round a couple of years ago, I actually literally just signed this guy to a contract for the AHL. And he retires after one AHL season. Yeah, he played the entire AHL season, put up six points, and he's like, you know what, I don't want to play anymore. 
Well, that's interesting. Okay, goaltending, no retirements. Okay, just making sure Corson didn't somehow retire at like 28. All skaters, anybody huge? Stamkos retires. Well, Kane retires. Yeah, there's some big retirements for the season. Marcus Granlund retires before McHale. They're the same age, I think, as well, so that's kind of interesting. And, okay, Brett Ritchie retires. I was thinking it was Nick Ritchie for some reason. Okay, what about goalies? Goaltending-wise, Carey Price retires. Wow. He must have went to a really bad team later on, because look at all those losses. Bobrovsky, Mrazic. Wow, Mrazic retired. He won... I think he won like a the heart one year in this series. Huh. Interesting. So I like that. So that's all the retirements. Let's actually just go to the progress reports because I think it updates the overalls for the players for next season almost already. And then we'll end this episode. Well, I'll show you guys the draft class too. So Tanner Pearson's dropping. But who cares? We only sent him to one year. Dumba is dropping, apparently. Granlund. Yeah, Granlund. I think he's retiring next year. I don't know if we could bring this guy back. How was his last season? Just so I could get it for the sheets and for his entire career stats. Not bad. Um, How about growth-wise? Who grew? Malone up to a 76. He might be NHL bound next year. Fitzgerald, 84. Okay, not bad, Eric. He's 22 now. How about Bear Schultz? Is he a 90 yet? Where is Bear Schultz? No, it's still an 89. 86, what the hell? Why is he mad? Oh, man, all his stats have literally gone down. Oh, it's morale growth, though, so it sh shouldn't affect his actual growth. Like, he should be an 89 again by next season, but... Huh. It's weird. Maybe just because we can't make it past the first round. Any AHL wise slash in the system. Any big outstanding. Let's just go to current overall. McQuaid's up to a 78. So he's in the NHL next year. I think. Maybe as their backup. Baran is getting close as well. Yeah, Lonan's up to a 72. This guy actually should be NHL banned soon. And lastly, goaltenders, our medium elite goaltender, 67, uh, he does not, he's not growing that much, Pittis is up to a 57, our other medium elite goaltender, and our starter, 54, okay, so that's the progress reports anyways, and that's going to be it, I think, almost, let's just do the draft class to wrap things up, just in case. I'll let you guys pick who we draft pretty much next episode. Unless I pre-record it, but I don't think I will. So, Redenbach, Exact Elite. Let's see who goes later in the first round. I'll just scroll through it all. So, if you guys see anybody that I should go after, let me know. Otherwise, that's going to do it for this episode of Minnesota Wild GMO. So, next episode, we're going to still go through our rebuilding and hopefully get like an actual good simulation out of this team like we made the playoffs and stuff like that but our next task is to actually win that Stanley Cup so thank you guys so much for watching see you guys next time